You guys still up there? All right. County Caveman. My, my name is Rex Camphouse. I'm Aloysia Gavre. I believe that cavemen invented the circus. I truly do. I think it's the first art. I think it's pre-language. I think it's pre-everything. I think the first time a caveman jumped off a rock and did a back tuck for his family and made them laugh, circus was born. How about this? First time a, consciously a caveman tripped on a rock to make his daughter laugh, clowning. Before painting, before music, before language, circus. So I've been a professional circus performer for the last 18 years. This last year, 2010, I had about 82 flights. And during that lot of flight travel, I get asked the question, and what do you do? And I say, well, I'm a circus artist. And then there's the look of like a superhero and yeah, how do I describe the lifestyle? How do you balance work and home and family? Yes, I am a circus artist. And I'm Professor Xavier School of Extraordinary Youngsters as the producer. We are both the co-founding directors of Troop Vertigo Circus Theater and Cirque School LA, which teaches recreational circus programming for anybody with any body. Training to be a circus artist, what does that take? What does that mean? I started, fortunately I grew up in San Francisco where there happened to be a circus school. We have grown up in a country here in the US where circus is not as revered or respected or doesn't have the storied history that Russia, China, Mexico, they really dominate that. They have a, a, a phenomenal history of it and it's very much respected in their culture. So San Francisco, 1980s, going to circus school, uh, had a Chinese master trainer, Master Lu Yi, and he evaluated my body as he did to every st incoming student, and I was told that I had good shoulders. Not too flexible, not too straight, they were perfect. So that meant that I was supposed to be a handstand artist. Whether I wanted to or not, that was what my body dictated. It was boring. <laughs> Standing on your hands with a timer in the center, it was hard on the wrists. What I really wanted to do was be a trapeze artist. It was beautiful. As a 12-year-old girl, I looked up and I was like, that's what I want to be doing. I want to be dancing. I want to be d captivating people, We're hanging by my toes, not standing on my hands. So I, I trained trapeze in secret. I think we all kind of did that in the circus. We had our, our passion that we loved and then something that uh, our trainers told us we had the natural disposition to do. But in circus, the main attractive thing is that it is about people working together. You need somebody to catapult you up in the air, either on a teeter board or given force by too high. You need to have the focus, extreme focus for a short amount of time. You're only asking for a moment as you get that air time to take off, but you need it. You can't think about your laundry list. You can't think about the fight that you're having. Very extreme, and those people who are working together have to have that together, whether or not they had a fight just momentarily. Cooperation and teamwork. Circus artists train for five years to perfect something they'll do for five minutes for the rest of their lives. They don't get to sing a bunch of different songs, they don't get to act a bunch of different parts, they do one five minute act for their entire career. They train 95% of the time and they rehearse and perform and put makeup and sequence on for about 5% of the time. That's the life. We challenge our bodies to the extreme. And some might say we're full of bruises and rope burns and broken bones and so forth, but somehow that adrenaline rush of achieving the trick is like none other. It's a certain amount of empowerment. You do feel like a superhero for a moment, especially when you do it with a partner. One very important thing is that we try to eliminate competition. Like the Olympics or like the X Games where there's so much infiltration of circus arts that we see, have seen in an alternative way, it's really important that the teamwork is there. If, if we as directors create an environment where there's any sort of ego or competition, it doesn't help feed a creative environment. China, Russia, I'm sure you, everybody have seen these amazing hand balancers. They stack 30 chairs. They go beyond what we can even imagine somebody doing. And myself as a circus artist and director, am amazed. And I can't even count how many they're doing. I can't count how many seconds she's on the one-arm handstand. She's not only on the one-arm handstand 30 feet up, she's also balancing a bowl on her head. And somehow, this is exciting and exhilarating. And it is, it's, it's a rush. 
But I think that there's another layer there that I and we have enjoyed exploring in True Vertigo, and that is to play something very ordinary and mundane, such as a kiss on the lips, or a shake of the hand, or a flirtation, putting that upon an extraordinary skill. We'll do a little demonstration to show you what she means. Yeah? yeah? You ready to get ready? Mm -hmm. One of the things that Troop Vertigo and Aloysia and I have been doing is exploring how to break the boundary between the audience and the performer. And one of the things that we look to to see how that's done successfully is in rock and roll. They're always constantly trying to connect with the audience and break that theatrical boundary that exists here, this little black ray of light between us and you guys. So we're going to show you a little bit about what we're talking about, but both what Aloysia is talking about as a performer and a choreography, and what we're talking about as energy in the theater. You guys ready for a little demonstration? <laughs> We've been lucky enough to be collaborating with the local LA band Nightmare and the Cat, and we happen to have brought them with us. Let's have them out. We also brought Aloysia's longtime acrobatic partner, Sagiv. We also gave you kazoos. Grab them. When you see Sam Stewart play his kazoo, join him. Sam Stewart on guitar, Django Stewart on vocals, Claire AC over there on vocals and multi-instrumentalists. Nightmare and the Cat's also made up of Spike on drums and Julie Mitchell on bass. Ladies and gentlemen, Troop Vertigo and Nightmare and the Cat.
garden in her hair You introduced me to the devil So much kazoo time. Ooh.